Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. You would have heard me say a few videos back that I am going to be working in collaboration with Polysil UK. Now Polysil did send me a lovely bundle to try out and show you guys and that is what today's video is going to be about. Today we are talking about Jesmini AC730. It's pretty special. Jesmini AC730... <laughs> Jesmonite AC730 is a granite effect Jesmonite. It is beautiful, right up my street. I love industrial looking things. So in today's video, we are going to make a Jesmonite pot because I'm still obsessed with these molds, these pot molds. And we're also going to make a Jesmonite tray with handles. And that was purely because one of my amazing subscriber friends, Linda, asked if we could put those handles in Jesmonite, would it stay? Now my gut feeling is telling me yes. You know like the resin handled trays that I've made quite a few of. We're going to test it out with Jesmonite. My biggest worry is that Jesmonite, the bubbles in Jesmonite rise to the surface which would then be the surface of your tray. So it's not like epoxy resin where you can torch them out or heat them out. So that's my biggest concern, but we'll try, get it right so there's no surface bubbles and just to see what that looks like. So one tray, one pot coming up. So Jesmonite AC730 is so, so different to Jesmonite AC100. This has got more of a sandy consistency and the ratio is crazy. It is one to five. So it's one part liquid to five parts powder. And honestly, when I tried it for the first time, I was thinking there's no way this is gonna come together. But I am telling you, it was like special magic when it all came together and it just worked out. Now the Jesmonite powder itself is this grainy much thicker now obviously have gloves on ideally it's a much thicker sandy consistency it feels just like exfoliation kind of sandy that kind of texture so imagine beach sand that's what it feels like to me the first thing we are going to do is mix up what we need for this pot the ratio i've already measured this pot takes 379 grams liquid 947 grams powder in Jesmonite AC100. It's different for A730. <laughs> AC730 did not fill it up, which is crazy to me. Like, I still can't get my head around the science, but it's all to do with density. This is way heavier stuff. So, when I measured out those exact measurements, the overall total in weight divided by the six parts, one to five, and then worked it out, it didn't, it didn't actually fill this mold. Now, this is what it looks like at this current state. You do start to think, is it gonna be enough liquid? But honestly, the more you stir, it becomes this thick, wet, sandy consistency. The best thing about this Jesmonite, it's got a four hour minimum cure time, which means I've got time to play. And if you're wondering why I just threw all the powder in at once, that is why, because I've got time. If there's no pressure like there is with the AC100, I've got time. The more I mix, the more it comes together. So you can see it's all coming together now and there's no more kind of big clumps, but I am going to keep working it for a little while. The other amazing thing about this Jesmonite AC730 is that it is out an outdoor based Jesmonite. This would work perfect for your garden planters or any decorative items you might want to make for your garden. I need a mould of a garden gnome. <laughs> Now, the last thing to mention before I pour it into the mould is that this is the AC730 Silver Granite Powder. They come in different colours. I've only tried this one so far, but they can be coloured with jesmonite pigments, mica pigments, etc. as you would any other jesmonite. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it in its natural state of the silver grey granite, just so you can see how glorious this is. So this is the final consistency before we're going to pour it in the mould. Now, 
This does take four hours before you can demold. I know some people have left it longer. So Beedle House, big shout out to you, lovely, on Instagram, who's actually really already started using AC730 and has already been able to tell me quite a few things to help me along my journey. So I'm just going to ooze it in there. Now, I made more than I would have done had I been using the AC100 um, we shall see if it's enough. If it's enough, then I will give you those measurements immediately. But of course, I had not mixed the right amount. <laughs> I'd actually not even added any. You can see the bubbles rising on this. You just have to go around and blow. You can use a straw or just bend down and use your mouth to blow the bubbles. And that's what I'm going to do. And this is why I'm worried about making a tray because the surface usually ends up a little bit bumpy. So with the tray, you would have seen this mold before. It's a really typical epoxy resin tray mold and you get the two handles to put in the sides. This is guesswork. I don't know how much this is gonna take. I've not tried it before. I'm gonna go with around about 400 grams total. So then I have to do the maths, divide that by six to work out the one part liquid and then the rest of it will be powder. I've either made way too much or still not enough. It's really hard to gauge. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pour it in, see what it does. I'm going to use my hands to just spread it out. Now, I've got this on a board so that I can shake and shimmy it. You really need to be able to shake it, not only to level out your surface, but to get any air bubbles to rise to the top. And again... One more time. Okay, I'm not going to shake it any more than that. I, I want to put the handles in, so we'll do that. I'm sorry if the light's really funny because it's almost the same colour as the background, but you kind of get the idea. Please stay, be good. And one on the other side. We do know that Jesmonite is drillable, so if you didn't want to put your handles in, you could wait till after and drill. But with this mould, you really need short short screws okay we are done are we done do they look even to you guys these are going to cure once they've cured we need to take the surface off revealing that granite pattern underneath now to do that you can either use two, one of two things you can use acid etch available from polyseal i am using natural white vinegar and i'm telling you the results are insane it is now time to demold. Now this has been left around about five, six hours. And uh, yeah, we're gonna peel it back and you can see already it's gone a really pale shade of white. And there's not much to see here, but you get a glimpse of the magic to come. So I'm gonna demold this, demold the tray, and then we'll talk about the etching. Right, it is time to now etch these pieces and basically take that surface layer off to reveal that granite. You guys, are, you're going to love it. Well, I hope you love it as much as I love it. Now, I said during the video, I'm going to be using white vinegar. So this is the vinegar that most of us kind of have here in the UK. You can see here, there's some silt. Because I've already used this vinegar once and uh, put it back in the bottle, I'm going to use it again. Now, this is the way I do it. Everyone's going to have their own way of doing things and this way might not be the best way. This is just the way that it's easier for me to do it this way and I feel like it gets the job done so much quicker. So this is an old pot that had jesmonite in it. So I'm going to place my pot inside and then I'm going to fill up with the vinegar. The first time I did this, I filled it to the top of the pot this whole pot, which really made it so hard to get this out. So right now, all I'm going to do is pour the vinegar on the outside, she says, making it sound easier than it is. Pour some in. In fact, I'll put the whole bottle in. This pot took three bottles of this vinegar. But again, it's up to you how you guys do it. This is just the way, honestly, I found it so much easier to do it this way. I'm going to rest my pot in. And you can see the vinegar's just coming up the sides, but not all the way to the side. 
I just want enough inside. There we go. So that is the pot semi-submerged. So the vinegar is actually coming up and touching the rim of the pot. There's only a little bit inside, which is still murky and dark because this is reused vinegar from the first time I tried this. Now I'm going to leave this for around about 20 minutes before I come back up and see the effect that that acidity of the vinegar has had on the outside of the pot. Then we're going to brush it off. Then we're going to wash it with water to neutralize the acid that is in that vinegar. I have taken the pot out of the mold and this is what you see. Now the next step for me is to start working this surface. I said in the video about this is the way I do it. There are other ways of doing it. With the acid etch and the white vinegar, you can scrub with a paintbrush. A lot of people will use a paintbrush to rub it on and then wash it with water to neutralize it and repeat that process until you get the texture that you want. But I'm lazy. And uh, if this works, then I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use an old toothbrush that I just use for cleaning and I'm going to start scrubbing. Can you see that? Can you see that? Oh. How gorgeous is that? I've got the vinegar to the side just to give me a little bit more to work with as I'm scrubbing. The first time I did this, I used a sponge scourer, you know, like from the kitchen, the cheap sponge scourers that you get. And it worked a dream, but it shredded the sponge scourer, which is why I was thinking maybe a toothbrush, a firm toothbrush would be better. But um, yeah, it is. You can see the difference. So we have got that natural grey granite and it is rough. This surface is now rough. It's It's got pockets. Oh, I just love it. And then that's the surface that has not yet been scrubbed. But it will come off with a little bit more scrubbing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get this clean. I'm going to rinse it with water and then I'm going to put it back in the vinegar for another 10 minutes. So this is what it looks like before. And this is what it looks like after it is by far my favorite Jesmonite. <laughs> it truly is granite. It's got a granite feel, like a really rough stone feel. You can see that up close. It looks like stone. It feels like stone. It is super heavy. I love it. I absolutely, I just love it. Right, with the tray, I have left the tray actually submerged in water. I am a bit worried about it because it's got those silver handles, so I don't know if the vinegar is going to wear those away at all. But this is the first time for everything, and we'll learn together. So I'm going to show you what it's like using the sponge. Now, it gets the job done a lot quicker. I'm going to rest it that way. Can I rest it that way? Can you see that clearly? Here it goes. But it does destroy the sponge, but it gets the job done much quicker. There you go. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now, you can tell I've had to put the light on because it is getting dark here, but hopefully you'll be able to see in that light as well the difference that makes taking that top off. Now, on the bottom, I'm not going to try too hard because this is kind of already nice and marbly it's got a nice smooth finish so i'm just going to give it a rough once over that's all i'm going to do to the bottom but the top is where i want it to really shine so really to answer the questions of whether handles could be put in jasmine eye absolutely yes they can they are solid as a rock i'm not going to do the smash test to see how easily they will break out because it doesn't look like they've got any plans on breaking out anytime soon solid so I'm going to keep scrubbing this and then we'll come back at the end and I'll show you both pieces. Can you guys see that glisten? There's like a, I guess like a naturally occurring sparkle that you would find in some natural rocks. Just wow is all I have. I absolutely love it. That is the tray finished. And the pot is also finished. What I'm going to do is leave them to dry overnight. Oh, you can see it on there as well. Look. 
What? What? I did not expect that. I didn't know. I didn't know it did that. I'm even happier now. I'm going to leave this to dry overnight and then we are going to go in with the sealer and hope that we still get that sparkle. So it is the next day, it's 24 hours later and it is time to seal these pieces. Now the difference between AC100 and the 730 is that this sealer is called FlexiGuard and it needs to be sprayed on. The recommendation is that it is sprayed and it forms an instant bond with your Desmonite which then becomes weatherproof and I think it's pretty heat proof as well, like up to heat proof, <laughs> not heat proof, heat proof up to... I want to say 300 degrees and like minus 25 degrees I think is what I've read on the website I will double check it make sure it's correct for you guys and put it on the screen now really weirdly I don't have any spray bottles and I actually took the spray lid from a method I <laughs> this is so bizarre guys I use method spray in my home and weirdly the lid from the bottle fitted the bottle of the FlexiGuard. So how handy is that? I just cut the um, I cut the tube down and we're gonna give this a spray. Now, I don't really know how many sprays I've tried reading up. I don't really see anywhere how many sprays we need to give. So I'm just gonna cover these handles with some masking tape and then get this sprayed. Um, it also doesn't say how far away you need to spray from. So I'm just kind of following my, following my gut instinct and give it a, an all over spray, quite a liberal spray, and uh, that's it. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do for that, and now I'm gonna do the pot. So with the pot, I'm gonna do the same thing again, and just spray, turn it, spray, turn it, spray, turn it, you name it, I'm gonna do it, because I still don't really know. <laughs> all it says on the website is use spray sealant. Now, guys, Ideally, I'd have my gloves on now. I didn't think, but here we are. I will make sure that I wash my hands immediately. Okay, I think I've gone all the way around. Yes, now I'm gonna spray inside. Making sure that I've pretty much covered all areas inside. It has been three hours since I've sprayed the sealer on. I don't know if there's meant to be two coats. If anyone knows, then please let me know. But yeah, great job. I absolutely love it. And I'm still in love with this texture. It's very rough texture. So it's not the kind of texture that you want to accidentally scrape your hand against. <laughs> Yes, it will hurt, but I absolutely love it. I love it. I cannot wait to put this pot outside in the garden with a plant inside. Now, this sealer will take the temperatures from the frost all the way up to the heat, and that's what excites me. So I cannot wait to make more, and the handles work in Jesmonite. So, so much has been learned here today, and if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to let me know. Give me a thumbs up. And something I never ask, if you've made it this far, please think about clicking that subscribe button. It will really help out my channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.